Classroom Services is an integral part of the infrastructure of Rutgers University. When I set out to begin this project, I wanted to know exactly how integral it was to how classrooms functioned on an everyday basis. Let me start at the beginning of my journey. The American Studies Media Culture Project is an independent study course offered through the Department of American Studies. As part of the ASMCP's ongoing investigation of the logistics of Rutgers University New Brunswick's infrastructure, I decided to explore the technology that is used in the classrooms every day. I wanted to know how it got here, who maintains it, and how faculty learns how to use it. While I was contemplating my options, I thought of one of my professors who could never seem to get the mirroring function on his laptop to project correctly. I wondered why he couldn't do that. I pondered, is there a technical team at Rutgers existing to educate faculty on how to use the classroom technology? So every phone call from a classroom or from outside a classroom for us goes through the help desk. The staff there then tries to help them over the phone. If they're using our new podium, the digital classroom podium, our staff can remote into the podium and help them that way uh, take over the, the uh, computer. Um, if they can't help them, they call our campus offices and they talk to the staff there and they ask them to go over. Um, the systems that we have now, which you know, the, the digital classroom podium, which is the new scanner, goes to one, and then there's uh, the Pixie, which is sort of a symbol, uh, and then we have the SP push button system, and then we have uh, the Crestron touchscreen system, and we have the PC coded over now that's like hardly anywhere. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty familiar with all of them. The user interface, it's the same for all the podiums because they just all share the same code. And just what that interface does behind the scenes with changing the volume, whether they're changing the volume on a Denon receiver or a DMP64 or 128, or, or, um, it all looks the same to the user. And if I want to change how it looks to the user, it's the same, same code, so it changes everywhere and it's all uniform. Uh, yeah, we have a system administrator who is able to, to install it across the entire university at the same time. But yeah, no one has to visit the rooms to, to do any updates like that. So when I came on board in 2000, there was only about 25 rooms that had projectors and technology that we're used to today in them. So now we have 250 classrooms and we have over 132 rooms with our podiums, but also I would say 90% of them have at least a data, a data projector in them now, so people can show digital images. And so I learned that there's a strong support for projection and other digital needs in the general purpose classrooms. As important as that stability is for professors, I began thinking of another time that I experienced someone fumbling around with the classroom technology. I was once in a class taught by a graduate student, and she didn't know how to use the systems either. Now my question is, to what extent does DCS assist Rutgers faculty members with their technical issues? I was in direct contact with everyone in the 27 rooms that got the first podium, kind of checking in, emailing them at mass to be like, what's your experience so far? Um, our on-campus staff was in the classrooms kind of uh, every day, poking their head in to see how it's going, helping them use it. Uh, then, 2013, we did a survey where we emailed everyone who was scheduled into the room with the digital classroom podium. And then in the spring, we invited them to come in, and we had about 20 faculty come and talk to us about the podium. Whenever a professor complains about the system or has any feedback, I encourage them to contact my supervisor or Dave, and I give them my supervisor, James, uh, his business card. Um, um. The information is, is 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 taken, and they're 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 listened to. I mean, we want to get the feedback from everybody. Um, I, um, most of those would go through Dave, processing a lot of those as a faculty outreach person. But if there's or if there are glaring issues or anything on there is information that we do use when we consider our next build or or what we want to do in the design of the classroom. Um, you know, there's a lot of comments that are outside of our domain like you know if there's heating issues or things like that we'll still work with facilities and how to try to get them addressed mm -hmm. so it, you know the information is processed and we, we, we're very I think we're very 
um, proactive department more so than a lot at the university. Where there's an issue, we jump at it. And I work with the people here long enough to instill the same sense of, you know, it's broken, it doesn't do anyone good, try to get it fixed as soon as possible. I get a decent amount of people who are like, I've never used the Mac, I don't know what I'm doing. Um, we offer training on it. Um, we're happy to come out and help them. And we think once you start using it, it's actually pretty intuitive and simple. So now I realize that there are various resources available for faculty and there's a system in place for reporting faulty equipment and a thorough support system ready to fix any problems that may arise. This only led me to my next inquiry. Is there a way for students to learn the systems too? It was sort of on the job training the supervisor showed me what to do and then at the end of the summer before I started the fall they had a, a training session. It was two days that announce one day um, we go into Livingston to Tillett Hall and explain all the different policies and all the different types of technology and how to assist professors. And then we have support specialists and some senior support specialists. Okay. So all of our student workers, um, almost all of them are just support specialists. Yeah, and they are often the first people to go help in person, um, either them or a campus supervisor. Um, well, so I mean the first thing they do um, we come in, we call and we tell help desk that we're in the room, that the previous person has left, and then we check. They have this thing called uh, log sheets that have the list of uh, scheduled tasks that we need to do. Um, so it might say go to a certain room and assist the professor, and that will be because they've requested an advance assistance, or maybe we have to deliver equipment that isn't in the room. Um, and then the other thing we have scheduled throughout the day, uh, testing and cleaning where we go to a room, there's a checklist, and we basically just test all the clean uh, equipment and wipe down the system uh, so that it's in good, uh, it's prepared for the instructors to use. Um, and then uh, we have uh, a student manual, um, which is available online. And when all of our support specialists start, they have to read the manual, review our training materials online, and then take uh, a Sakai quiz to show that they got it. And then during the year, we have um, five quizzes for the academic year. That's kind of continuing development. Um, that uh, It both teaches them and quizzes them on uh, skills related to the job. Yeah, we've been exploring um, like presenter control, uh, like annotation on the board. You can use a Nintendo Wiimote in a certain way to be able to draw. They're just, you know, putting in more of the digital classroom podiums. We're um, working on deploying our first active learning classrooms. So these are collaborative classrooms where rather than have seats facing the front, they might be round tables where the students sit around it. And the students have a monitor where they can put up images from their computer. Um, and the, the idea is it, it creates a kind of more collaborative environment where the Instructor can walk around the room, assign group projects, and then monitor their progress. We're trying to come up with new teaching tools that we can encourage faculty to use and pilot. So right now we're really engaged with video conferencing and working with faculty who are interested in it to use it in their class. So we have a few pilots going right now, um, but we're also currently exploring other pilots. In early May, Digital Classroom Services held a showcase called Unplugging from the Podium, they exhibited lots of new products and devices designed to get instructors out from behind the podium so that they can become more interactive with their students. Some of the new technological devices that were demoed included options of controlling the podium using Chrome Remote Desktop, wireless projection using a new system called ClickShare, a whole slew of video conferencing software, and wireless handheld mice. These products are all available to be piloted in classrooms as of the fall semester. Overall, Digital Classroom Services is the battery that keeps our general purpose classrooms running smoothly. Without their intricately designed systems, our classes wouldn't have the ability to easily project multimedia learning materials on the screens. Without the support specialists, the systems would be dirty and become problematic without fix. Without the staff, we wouldn't have exciting new podiums and other classroom technology designed and instituted on a regular basis.